make a few observations about faith, okay? Some characteristics about faith. Here's characteristic number one about faith. Faith, in many ways, is the most illogical thing in the world. Faith, in many ways, is the most logical thing in the world. This is a paradox, folks. Faith seems illogical. Faith is logical. There's characteristic number one. There are many people in the world today who tell us faith is illogical. It's silly. It's dangerous. It's counterproductive. It's harmful. Faith is illogical. Some people will tell us, how in the world can you put your trust in anything that cannot be verifiable? That you cannot chart, that you cannot graph, that you cannot see under a microscope? How can you put your faith in something like that piece of bread is really and truly our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, true God and true man? You can't prove that. You can't see that under a microscope. This version, that faith is illogical, is often called empiricism. Empiricism means we only believe what we can scientifically verify. And there's a lot of people these days who believe that. <clears throat> You're familiar with, with very popular atheists like, like Hawkins and, and Dawson who will say, no, if I can't see it under a microscope, if I can't scientifically verify it, I'm not putting my faith in it, all right? So there's one example of faith, uh, that, 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 a faith that is illogical. The patron saying this, of course, is down in Thomas, one of the apostles, no, who wouldn't believe Jesus had risen from the dead until he could put his fingers into the wounds. That's empiricism. No faith without scientific evidence. There are those also who think that faith is illogical because they think that faith is just a superstitious crutch for people who need it to get through the world, the troubles and anxieties of the world. Karl Marx believed that, remember? He called religion, he called faith the opiate of the masses. He said, faith is just a crutch, pie in the sky to help people avoid the responsibilities, the duties, the trials of this life. So faith is dangerous. In Marxist Russia, for instance, the commissars would walk into a classroom of children who were hungry, and they would say, pray to God for bread. And they would. The children would put their heads down. No bread came. Then they'd say, ask me for bread. And the children would say, can we have bread? And the commissar would bring in bread. Okay? This is the Marxist version that faith is simply an opiate of the masses, a pie in the sky, a superstition that helps people get through life. And another group of people who feel that faith is illogical are those who say that it's downright dangerous. These would be people today like Christopher Hitchens who say, Faith is dangerous because it leads to hatred, all the violence, all the evil. Many of the wars that we have in the world today come from faith. Therefore, faith is not only illogical, faith is dangerous. Faith is counterproductive. All right? So, those are, those are our people that say faith is illogical. But, everybody, here's the opposite side of that coin. Faith is the most logical thing of all, when you think about it. Our beloved Blessed John Paul II issued an encyclical called Fides et Ratio, Faith and Reason. And he said, faith isn't illogical. Faith is the most reasonable thing that we've got. Faith flows from the deepest core of the human psyche. St. Anselm, the great medieval theologian, said, boy, we have a strange God if we had a God who gave us our greatest natural gift, our mind, our intelligence, that clashed with the greatest supernatural gift, our faith in Him. And Anselm said, and that doesn't happen because faith and reason are alive. Boy, we even got some of the great philosophers in history like Aristotle and Plato. They never heard of Jesus. They never heard of the Bible. They never heard of the church. But yet they were believers. 
All right? They had faith. Aristotle said, look outside of the world around you. How can anybody see the coherence and the grandeur and the beauty and the symmetry and the, the cohesion and the coordination and the choreography of the universe and not believe in a divine architect? And Plato would say, you don't have to look out there, like Aristotle says, look inside of you, look deep down, see? And you will see a spark of infinity. You will see deep down in your heart and soul a longing for the infinite, a thirst for the beyond.